Hello. So I recently watched a video called 10 years ago I had a teacher crush that ruined me and I related to it on a very deep level, especially considering my erotomania and the whole teacher situation that I had with my life. Um, I wrote something. Uh, if I can find it. I write better than I talk. So I'm just going to read off the letter. So I've talked about hearing voices before as well as my er erotomania, but I don't think I included my voice hear the voice hearing aspect of my erotomania in my vi video about erotomania. So I tend to hear quite a few voices in my head. Two prominent voices are one, the voice of my former teacher, who I called Miss S in my last video and will also be calling Miss S in this video, and the voice of her husband, whom I shall call, I don't know, John. John, sure. So I started hearing voices in 2015 or 2016. Um, they pretended to be they pretended to be my teacher. She had she has a distinct, like nasally pitchy kind of voice. It's very distinct. And the voice that I heard that one night in 2016 sounded just like her and they were laughing and then she just said something about no, uh, I can't believe you listened to Fleetwood Mac because her first, her real first name is part of a song by Fleetwood Mac. So another incident occurred wherein I was playing that specific Fleetwood Mac song with her name in it, and a voice that sounded like her husband said, "Oh my God, she's in love with you." But I think it was more like, "Oh my God, she's in love with you," something along those lines. And the only reason I know what her husband sounds like is because I called their house once. Um, yeah, and that was that. Um, and then there were also a couple incidents wherein the voice that sounded like her husband said, you're, fu you're fucking my wife, which is of course not true. I <laughs> Every time I, I think about this, I, I think of that Nicki Minaj song that's like, I never fucked Wayne, I never fucked Drake. <laughs> So, yeah. So, and then I think what spurred this newfound um, delusion of my own mania is um, I heard a gun in COVID marijuana because it's legal here in Canada. So, last week, like November 19th, and these voices became a lot louder than usual and a lot clearer than usual. And it sounded just like my Miss S. and and uh, Miss S, um, the voice that sounded like Miss S said, Oh, I thought we weren't real, in a like a sarcastic manner. And I replied, also in a sarcastic manner, Well, I thought it wasn't mutual, Re which referred to me confessing my feelings for her about six years ago and getting rejected, essentially. And then when I said that, Oh, I thought it wasn't mutual, and then the voice just yelled, It is, which is confusing and it really feeds into my erotomania because, you know, these voices sound just like her and her husband. And then um, I started thinking about, like, unaliving myself as someone with major depressive disorder does. And then the husband's voice, John's voice, said, you don't need a gun to heal yourself. And then the former, and then Miss S, the voice that sounded like Miss S said, John, back off, something like that. I also feel like this couple is communicating with me through social media. For example, I posted something related to the song Ironic by Alanis Morissette on my Twitter. And a few days, maybe even a few hours later, uh, Miss S retweeted one of Alanis Morissette's tweets. So I was like, okay. And also there's a, a Spotify playlist that is scarily um related to everything i think but it's not i didn't make that playlist there's someone under the name xixi that made the playlist i don't know what xixi is but it's like i had um my erotomania and my schizophrenia leads me to believe that it is from this couple or this teacher and what really um besides the marijuana that what spurred the psychosis and these new hallucinations and this these new delusions is that my former teacher became my younger brother's teacher last year because I saw her 
name on his report card and everything you know from from the time I was in grade nine to the time I confessed her when I was 20 years old it all just came back and like in full force and it was just it was just not a good feeling <laughs> and I really wanted to ask my brother my younger brother about this particular teacher Miss S but I felt like it would cause some trouble especially because of like the rift it has caused in my relationship to my family and my friends um some friends have been more understanding and have been with me through these delusions and the erotomania but some friends actually left and you know god moved them i'm christian but yeah, god moved them out of my life because they couldn't handle me at my worst and yeah this is what it really is like that this obsession this crush is just bringing the worst out of me and it's it's really tiring so i i thought about moving where i was born because mm, uh i feel like like i was facebook and twitter stalking her but i feel like like she knows my address because she's like teachers know their students address, and i've seen her pass by my house on her bike and like figure out where she is and like she's also seen her uh, like people that look like her at least around my work area and she lives in the city that is next to the city I live in, if that makes sense. New West, she lives in New West, I live in Burnaby. And honestly, I just want to move away from this neighborhood, maybe another city, another province, probably another country. I can't stand, I really can't, because of what she did when she, when I confessed to her everything and then she essentially like ratted me out to her boss and um, the cops showed up at my door or I don't know security cops I don't know what they were but they showed up at my door a few days after I confessed and I was banned from the school so my brother is at the school so thank god it's close to our house so he can walk home but if my brother was younger and was not able to do that then I can't even pick him up from school I, I'm not allowed on school grounds um so I just I just feel like it's unfair because like she's allowed to be like, I don't know if it was her or if I was just hallucinating, but I saw someone that looked just like her pass by my work place because um, I work at a daycare and then I was at the playground and there was a lady on her bike and then we, I saw her and she, we almost locked eyes, but I wasn't sure if it was her. But if it is her, I find that really unfair that she can go to my place of work, but I can't go to hers. Why? Like, that... <sighs> Like, she's allowed to be in my vicinity, but I'm not allowed to be near her vicinity. Like, it makes no sense. And it's a one-sided relationship from my end. At least, that's what the logical, realistic explanation is. The more far-fetched and for me, uh, far-fetched, um, far-fetched idea is that she actually does have feelings for me and it's mutual and I'm hearing her voice. And she's communicating really telepathically, but now that I say that out loud, it just seems so unrealistic. Like, it just doesn't seem right that, you know, someone would do this. <sighs> so, but I feel like going back to the Philippines or moving to another city is just, you know, running away from my problems. But I live so close to this woman and her family. She she's she teaches she still teaches at the school that my brother attends. So there's no escaping this if I still continue to live here. If I move like back to the Philippines, for example, or to a different province in Canada, then then it will be you know, I might have some solace left. <laughs> I might have some sanity left in my brain if I leave this place. I just, but the thing is, like, I'm so comfortable where I am right now, besides the fact of this erotomania and this obsession. Like, I am, I like my job. It doesn't pay that much, but I can live off of it. I live with my parents. I moved out last year. 
but I moved back in and that's fine because they don't make me pay rent, which is great. So I live in someone's house for free, essentially. So I'm there. So I don't know. Like, I want to get, I don't, I'm, this sounds, I'm not, like, I have schizophrenia, I have erotomania, but I'm not a dangerous person. Like, I'm not going to go and, you know, off somebody. So that's not going to happen. But what I want to happen is for me to not see this person anymore, <laughs> like, around me, my, I just don't want to be near this person. I don't want to have anything to do with this person. I don't know if I ever even loved her. I feel like it was just, it was an infatuation. So, yeah. I think someone's here. I'm going to go now. <laughs> well, goodbye. And hopefully, that's it.